Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen. Another special interview here on uh, for YSNlive.com. DJ Yokely with you and a gentleman who you know we've talked about for many, many, many years. He's gone on to do great things on the baseball diamond, and now he's doing even greater things uh, off of it and leading by example. Just give you a little taste of what this young man now, I don't want to say he's old man, but I mean, he's the veteran in the clubhouse now at Bowling Green. But when he was at Lisbon, David Anderson High School, ladies and gentlemen, he had more records than Elvis Presley and still has most of those to this day. He had, what, an ERA of 1.85 in each of his final three seasons at Lisbon, David Anderson High School. He batted over 400 in three of his four seasons in high school. And again, like I said, has many, many records to this day. He is now at Bowling Green by way of Akron University. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2024 Medal of Honor recipient and Medal of Excellence winner, Logan Bell. Hey, Logie, what's up, buddy? Pleasure to be here. Just Grinding out some finals week things, man. Just really enjoying, really enjoying getting a bachelor's degree. Yeah. I, I mean, you're living the life right now, uh, you know, just throwing pearls and striking dudes out. And oh, by the way, winning Medal of Honors that completely confused me when I got the text message. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, was really, really scratching my head because I, I didn't know that you were fighting in a war. But after researching the Medal of Honor, what it means to not only – uh, Bowling Green, but the Medal of Excellence in the MAC, um, such a significant award, and nobody deserves it more than you. For you, when did you find out about this? What does this medal mean um, to the university? What does it mean to you? So I had found out about it. I mean, it's kind of been a thing that's gone around in the school for a while now. One of our guys had won it last year, and when they when I got the email that I was a finalist for it at the Ziggy Awards, which was this past Sunday – it meant a lot to me because it was kind of not on my radar, so to say, but it was kind of like, Hey, you're doing all these things. You're in the community. You're really speaking out for athletes on campus. Let's kind of push it towards something. And it ended up being that. And I'm very thankful to have been nominated and received the award. And I'm glad that I can represent BGSU in the way that it intends athletes to represent the school. And I think what's what's incredible about that, all of that, right? Wrap that up, put it on the side the sidebar. But what you've been able to do and represent this area because you've done it well, you and so many others um, of that first kind of wave of YSN student athletes that went out into the world. Um, you've done such such great work, not only on the the field, in the classroom, but in the community. Logan, you did the same thing. And Lisbon, and that's why I think everybody looks to you and says, okay, everybody told this young man, everybody told this guy he couldn't do X, Y, and Z. And now he's not only doing X, Y, and Z, but he's doing the other 23 letters of the alphabet as well. The adversity, and we'll get to some of the stuff that you faced at BG with the health issues, but the adversity that you faced going from high school to college and everybody telling you no, and then obviously you get the call from, from Akron, you move on to BG, what does it mean to you? What does it show you about the adversity, how you handle it and, and things of that nature? I think for me, it's kind of relying on my support staff, my parents, my family. And whenever something goes wrong, I always have those people to back me and help me with any problems that I'm having. And I mean, going back to, I mean, we talk about it going through surgery, going through Tommy John relying on my parents and my faith to get me through those that long summer and that long return to playing is kind of the biggest thing that has helped me. And I think being three hours away from home, I'm close enough for them to drive, but I'm also a phone call away. And they know whenever something's going on that, hey, give Logan five minutes of your time to just call him while he's on the way to Chick-fil-A or something and yeah. talk to him. I, I think going through Tommy John, to me, when I heard that, you know, all the stuff that you were you were battling through and that you were going through with your arm injuries, it cro like my heart broke for you. For you, what was it like? Like w when you, you when you felt it, you know, the, the first and second time for that matter. Like what 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 goes through your mind um, of 
how am I going to get, how am I going to ever get back to where I was? Am I going to be able to, you know, break those ceilings that I set for myself? What goes through your head when you, you deal with an injury? I think it was kind of realizing where I am and I'm at the point where I'm a grown man. I'm an adult. Yeah. And once it happened at Akron, I was still 18 years old. I was fresh into college and found out I partially tore it during COVID. So couldn't get surgery, couldn't do all the things I needed to do. So spent COVID rehabbing, getting some things right that I hadn't been able to get right, like my diet. And once, uh, once it happened again, it was like, all right, you know what, you know what the process is, you know how it goes. It's just adding a little bit more time to it. And I think that was the one thing that really helped me was looking at it one day at a time rather than, oh, here's the end goal of pitching in a baseball game. It was how can I do this rep of this exercise and physical therapy today to the best of my ability? And I think that's kind of pushed me to think that way about every rep of every minute of every day. I think one of the things that I admire about you most is as as good as you are on the field, all these records, legitimate records, all these unbelievable things that you've been able to do on the field and off the field, you never take credit for it. You've always been, to me, the consummate professional and the ultimate teammate because you're always giving credit where credit is due which is when you were a quarterback, it was your linemen and your backs and your receivers and all that stuff. When you're a pitcher, it was your offense and your defense behind you. When you were, I mean, you play basketball and, and you didn't necessarily want the ball even. You just wanted to be part of that, that culture. You know, you do it at college, which is a huge jump. People think, and, and, and for, you have the experience, so you can tell me if I'm wrong, um, but as a D3 baseball player, I thought that the jump from high school sports to college sports was going to be – like that easy turn on the switch and go what were some of those things maybe on the field obviously but in the classroom time management but ultimately as a teammate that you had to make those adjustments and realize that you almost had to like step off one ladder that you were at the top of and, and start at the bottom of another yeah honestly the easiest way to put it is think about how athletics were your freshman year in high school you're well, for me, I was 14 years old as a freshman playing against 18-year-olds that we thought were grown men at the time. Yeah. And then you get to college as an 18-year-old freshman who excelled in the classroom and was able to handle stuff off the field by yourself, but you also had your parents with you, so there wasn't any outside distractions. And then you get to college, and it's, hey, there's all this stuff going on. you got to balance your social life, being able to hang out with other people, being able to enjoy being in college with your friends and with your teammates and with other athletes, along with the fact of, Hey, every day is you got to get better and make a name for yourself while you're also competing against these 21, 22 year old, actual grown men as a 26 year old because of COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey. yeah. You, you got, you got the short end of the straw, man. I'm sorry. Like that's your whole generation has, has had a rough go at it when it comes to, who you're playing because you're playing some grown dudes, um, you know, throughout because of the whole COVID thing. But um, it, for me, it was kind of a blessing in disguise because I was young for my grade and it kind of pushed me back into like an idea of reclassifying, but it wasn't a full, like I didn't have to go through high school again or get held back when I was younger. COVID happened and I was now 19 as a, as a freshman. Glass is always half full for you, man. I love it. Yeah. And it never, ever goes away, which is kind of leads to our next question. We talked about the teammate side of things. I mean, I remember distinctly when you were a PO um, on Pletch's team, you know, you showed up every day, which isn't something that everybody did. And you do that. I mean, you were always engaged. I, I The one picture that will always stand out to me, I think we used it the last time we did an interview, was you on top of the, on the top step of the dugout, and you were shouting, celebrating, or or cheering for your teammates. You've always been that guy. Where did you learn that, and how does how has that kept along this entire time and not just been like, hey, at some point it's got to be about me? I think I kind of grew up with the idea of being selfless. And at the end of the day, that's kind of the thing where we're at right now as a, as a team here at BG is 
It's not about my accomplishments. It's about the team's accomplishments. And I think that's been the thing that's really pushed us forward, especially when you're 17 and one in Mac play and you got to take a step back after losing your first Mac game and be like, Hey, the streak's over. We don't have to deal with it. It's, it's over. You lost whatever move on to the next game. You play another, it's baseball. You're going to get another opportunity to play baseball. And I think that's the fun thing is being able to look at guys that you've grown up with or you've spent four years here with and they get their opportunity and they find and they not finally, but they put their best foot out there and they they succeed. And it makes it makes being a teammate the most enjoyable thing in the world because you know how much work they put in. You're right next to them every day. You were right next to them in September at seven o'clock in the morning running a mile. Like there's so many things that go into it for us is that willing to continue to win and continue to stay healthy and continue to play baseball at the high level we are. If we can get to the Mac tournament and dogpile at the Mac tournament, it'll make, it makes everything worth it. And that's what every win every, every day means to us. It puts that sacrifice that you were able to put away during those tough days in August, those tough days in September. And even December, when you're home for a month out of the year, sacrificing, hey, this is my baseball time every day. Nobody is going to talk to me when I'm at baseball. And I think that's kind of the one thing that we've done as a group and Coach Alex um, instilled in us is that it's about the team. It's not about personal goals. No, I love that. I think that's team first mentality. I think that isn't something that you necessarily needed to learn. And you've become a, like I said before, a veteran in the clubhouse, a guy that leads by example. Um, so you guys, obviously you just mentioned it, 17 and one, just suffered your first loss in Mac action. When you're looking at um, a, a situation over the last few years, as you guys have obviously grown up to this point, I mean, you're a, you're a team that, could barely string wins together. I mean that with all due respect. And now here you are talking about the possibility of dog piling up at the Mac tournament. What changed? What is it? The mentality? Is it the growth? Is it the the leadership? What what changed that you guys went from just trying to win a few games in the season and, and, and be respectable to now you are a force to be reckoned with? I think it's. I think it's a mix of things. I think as a group, we were very tired of losing baseball games because you have those weekends where you lose a, you lose a series one, two, or you get swept. And it's just, it's one of those things that sits with you for the rest of the year until you get to play that team again. Like going into every weekend, we remember, Hey, this is what they did to us last year. And that's kind of our motivation in terms of never take your foot off the gas. And I think it's kind of, um, it's definitely, we've been a lot better at being a player led team when it comes to, Hey, this is the extra rep that you're getting right now during practice. And we're able to push each other in the weight room and we push each other on and off the field, whether it be in the classroom or in the field house or on the baseball field. And it could be a freshman telling a senior, Hey, this is what I'm seeing. I need more from you. And the senior is going to say, Got it. I respect you. I'm not I'm not a upperclassman, so I get to do whatever I want. And I think that's kind of the big thing right now is especially in the dog days of the year, you're you got five weeks left and we have to keep the foot on the gas for this thing to keep rolling in the right way. For you, there's I know that you you cherish your time at, at Lisbon. You cherish what you've been able to to drum up at, at in your your college career. Obviously, we talked about a lot of people saying no thanks, thanks, but no thanks along the way. For you, for all the kids out there that are hitting eighty eight or you know are, are batting four hundred for their school and it's not enough, and they hear it, it's not enough. What advice would you give them as someone who battled through it, came out on the other side, and is now attacking championships and Potentially, potentially, fingers crossed, there's a major league team out there that says, hey, I like what you have and what you bring to the table, whether it's from a leadership standpoint and what you do with that right arm of yours. What, what advice would you give to those players, not just in baseball, but but those student athletes that are hearing the nose and, and keep trying to overcome it? And some days it's a lot tougher than others. 
I'd say pick out something that you see every day and write down your goals, put it on, put it on the door. Like I have, I'm 22 years old and I still have a post-it note on the back of my bedroom door in my apartment. That is the goals for the day, the goals for the week, the goals for the year. And I remember my senior year of high school, that was the the thing that I had. I had a screensaver for a full year on my phone that was a radar gun that said 90. And that was what I chased every day. Whenever I looked at that phone, whenever I made a decision, whenever I went to bed, it was, this is the goal. You're going to get to this goal. And I think you got to also be able to accept the criticism. If, if a coach has something that he says that he sees, accept it. If it's going to help you and make you better, turn it into something positive. You don't need to take every, every critic, every criticism personally. Yeah. Like it's not going to be something they're not doing it because they don't like you. They're doing it because they think it's something that you need to improve on and it can help you down the road. How have your goals changed along the way? I mean, obviously your goals as a senior in high school differ than how they are in senior in college. How have they changed along the way for you personally and, and professionally? I think for me right now, it's finish up my degree, continue to be a better person on and off the field, continue to be a great teammate and make sure that no matter what I'm doing on any given day that I'm getting 1% better. I grew up going to football camps as a quarterback and that was the one thing, 1%. Because you look at college athletics. If you play, if you're a football player and you're playing division one football, and this is what they this is what they said, and I can remember it because it's lodged in my brain. If you are a quarterback playing college football, you are in the one percent of the country. And that's the one thing that kind of has always stuck with me. And I mean they always had a saying, Passio Bellator. And I I don't remember the exact translation from Latin, but it was along the lines of warriors must suffer. And I think that's kind of the daily routine that you go through where when you get into a day like today for us, where it's, hey, you got a game tomorrow, you just finished up a three-game series, your mind wants to say, oh, I'm going to take it easy. But you need to turn it around and be like, hey – I have to get better today and I'm going to work as hard as I can because I only have this many days left. I guess I can take it off the script a little bit because of our relationship that we've had the last five, six years. Um, so for, on that list of goals, where is grow a great mustache? Cause my gosh, it's on there right now, buddy. It's, it's awful. I know it's, it's so bad. I get I get a lot of hate Should for it. Should we get a close up um, of this thing or what? Let, let's let's no, get a close up of this thing. Do not do not out me on that. Um, it's a work in progress. It's I'm awesome. not I'm not I'm not Skip Craig yet where I have where I have it everywhere. But that's like that's one of the things growing up is I've never been a facial hair guy, so I'm trying to figure it out. You're you're and a couple months away from it. asking us for for license and registration. I know that it, that you're along those lines. Well, that's one of that's one of Coach Halleck's things, actually. Is he he talks to us yeah. about it because we're a as a team, we're a very clean cut. He make talks sure about your beards are trimmed. Well, not mustaches exactly, but facial okay. hair in general. Because he he told us, I remember it might have been it might have been my first year in BG. It might have been when I was getting recruited to by him to Malone. He was talking about growing up and how it works and how you're gonna. F- play around with things to figure out what's going to be the rest of your life. And you're going to play around with facial hair to see what's going to be the one that kind of clicks and stays with you. And I think a mustache would be cool, but I mean, you can see this thing. It's thin. It doesn't help, but we're working on it. It's a work in progress. Can you try like the Johnny Depp? I mean, you can, you can no, be like Captain Jack long. Sparrow in the Mac tournament. That, that would be dope. No, I can't even grow my I can't grow my hair that long anymore without it calibrating. Dude, you could be you could be the guy, the pirate of the bullpen. You come out, you're a swashbuckler, you have a whole thing. We could WWE this thing and make I mean, I'll, I mean I'll dye it, be I'll I'll bleach it if I have to. I'll do whatever I got to. I'll, <laughs> bleach, I'll bleach, it. bleach it. I'll bleach I'll bleach the hair, dye oh, the mustache black, oh. whatever I gotta do. 
Oh man, hey, I think I'm, we a, went I'm a superstition a guy. So if if something's working, we're gonna keep with it. Like I've gone through shaving everything on the face, not shaving for a couple weeks, just letting everything grow out, looking Amish for a very long time, and then you don't, shaving you everything. You can't grow again. a beard. You can't no. grow a beard. No. When we were at Xavier after after the Sunday game, so my parents or after the Saturday game. So my parents and I always take a picture at our weekend sure. series. It's kind of our thing. We're taking the picture and mom's holding the camera and she looks at me and goes, Hey, there's, there's no hair growing right here. And I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, you're really going to bring that up now? Like, but it's just, it's kind of the progression I've got. Like one of our other parents, when we were at the dinner that weekend, we looked at me and we're like, Hey, um, they stopped selling razors in Bowling Green. Just, yeah it was a good one it was it was a good enough one that i came home and shaved when we got back I'm, listen i'm proud of you i'm proud of you because the mustaches are a thing right now i'm not brave enough to take on a mustache like my dad had a mustache i can't just stop there like i'm beard. So that's the great thing i have i have charles bell he you do. he'll do anything to his face with with his hair like, I mean, my senior year of high school for senior night of baseball, he had, I mean, he had a full mustache and shaved oh, yeah. everything else. Granted, and the mullet, mom, wanted, was that, mom was that, wanted to fight him over it. Was it. Where was the mullet? The mullet was. So he, well, that was him trying to grow his hair out. That wasn't, okay. he wasn't trying to do a mullet. It, it was, it just happened because okay. he couldn't get past the sides. <laughs> but he lost a, he lost a bet to. I think it was Colin. It was like the group of seniors, like Colin Sweeney, David Toot, Jake Liberati. Yes. Okay. Or it might have been Josh Liberati and those guys. But the bet was, hey, if we make the playoffs, you got to grow your hair out because that was kind of the phase that happened. My so my freshman sophomore year of high school was everybody grew their hair out. Yep. And then he grew it out and kept it long for a very long time, and has kind of started to cut it down and work back. Now he looks like freaking James Bond, man. He, he just, like, I don't know how he does it. Like I had a, I had a picture of him from when he was at Newcomerstown and like his fr senior year football picture where he had like the flow on the sides. He looked like a hockey player. Like he had the flow. It was, it was unbelievable how he did it. And then like, I had him as a dad growing up bald head all the time. He just shaved his head every day. So that was what I had. So I didn't know that was a thing. He just reinvents himself. That's how he does yeah, it. Yeah, I don't know how he does he's, it. He's the CB. That's who he is. He's the wild man. He's, um, he, he's the wild card. He you is never the wild know card. what you're gonna get. You know what you're gonna get. For for you, um, just kind of wrapping things up, um, because we've gone way off the script, but I'm okay with that because we can show off some of our relationship. That's cool. For you, what do you want to see out of yourself this year and and, and potentially next year? Um, if you don't go by way of the draft, I mean, what, what things do you have kind of to check off your bucket list to, to finish things off for you? I think definitely for me, winning a Mac championship would be at the top of the list. Cause it's one thing that would be so much fun to enjoy with a group of guys as a collective that in 20 years, I can come back to Bowling Green with the 34 guys, the other 34 guys on this team and be like, Hey, you remember when we did this? You remember when we won this game? Like, remember, remembering all those moments. And I think it would be really cool to become, obviously, a draft prospect, obviously, make my way into professional baseball of some kind. And that's the one thing I've kind of sat down and talked with my parents about before is professional baseball comes in all aspects. There's indie ball, there's overseas. Mm -hmm. And I've been lucky enough to have a couple friends who've played in Australia and friends who've played in Europe. And I think it would be kind of a full circle moment being able to be that kid who grew up in a small town that loved sports and grew up telling everybody that would talk to him, hey, I'm going to be a professional athlete one day. And being able to finally check mark the box of I did it, whether it takes me the next 20 years of my life or whether it takes me five years. And I think that would just be the one thing for me going through life 
that would kind of not complete it, but definitely put that check mark that says, hey, I was able to accomplish what I told everybody I was going to accomplish. So potentially, like we're not talking about a year. We're talking about another stretch. Like you're going to Yammer Yager this thing. You're, you're like going to go well, over and play in Russia. Maybe not Russia, but <laughs> I was told that as long as I can figure out how to financially support myself, I can pursue whatever I want whenever I want to. So I plan on pursuing college baseball until they tell me, hey, you're 35 years – I mean, well, pursuing professional baseball until they look at me and say, hey, buddy, you're you're expired. The milk that, carton is way too gone. That mustache will be full by then. Shoot, It'll maybe not. Full. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> it might not be. LB, we appreciate you, man, so much. I, I can't wait to see you in person. We're so proud of you, obviously, and not just for what you do on the field, but for representing not only your family, but your community, everybody here at YSN, the, the entire region, winning the Medal of Honor, man. I know we kind of joked about it off the air. It's a serious deal, and it's a big deal, and we're so proud of you for doing that. Congrats on all that. All your success. Can't wait to see you soon, brother. Thank you. I really appreciate it. I mean, I miss I miss Northeastern Ohio. There's something about hills and wind not blowing at 30 miles you're an lying. hour. Stop it. You're you're lying no, now. Now you're you, just don't patronize us. The those. wind the wind howls out here. If I if I took you outside right now, you'd be like, be like I can't. You sound like you're in an airplane because <laughs> it just it blows out here, man. It's crazy. We were playing golf yesterday, and I hit I hit like a. 175 yard shot into an 140 yard par three because it was just blowing directly in our face. You were in Augusta. Yeah, it was bad. We were, wow. yeah, it was, it was, it was fun, but the wind is just, you get wind burnt. You don't really recognize how wind burn works until it happens a lot. And then you kind of pick up on it. If you didn't know, by the way, Logan's a pretty doggone good golfer too. He's actually just good at everything he does. In average, you know, average at golf, not great at basketball. All right. Hey, you okay. you gotta agree with me on the basketball one because I'm. I will not. I still think it, you're no. a key cog, but but golf. Keep telling people that you're average because we'll pull you on our our teams this this summer and we'll, we'll use that hand. We we'll use my handicap. Hey, I'm always down to golf. You know that. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for the time. Congratulations again. Thank you. Really appreciate you having me on. Got it, buddy.